Hey, it's Joe Lyons from The Automator, and welcome to another episode of What We Automated This Week Without a Hotkey. Let me share my screen. Go. And um, I've already launched uh, our recently modified files. I think let me bump up the DPI, make it a little easier. Then I don't have to zoom in the recording. It's just easier, right? And um, we've been doing a lot of client work, so that's still what we're up to. A lot of stuff for this biofeedback stuff. We're, we're creating a lot of automating reports and automating the tools. It's really cool. Our um, client was invited to speak at this worldwide convention, part of because some of how we've been helping her, not entirely, but it's from her automation zone. That's what she's doing. And it's really cool. She's using AutoHotKey and getting really a lot of notice. Uh, so it's really cool to be helping someone. And, and their stuff is around health also. So it's really cool that we're helping people that are helping people. But... Um, it's very cool. She's going to be speaking at this big event. We're going to help with the webinar a bit, but uh, we're creating a lot of stuff for them. This ADODB, this next week, the Hero Members, uh, Irfian is going to be talking to how to read an Excel file without having Excel installed. This ADO database, uh, Active Data Object, has been around since like Windows 3.1 or somewhere in there, and uh, it's built into every Windows computer, so you can rely on it being there. Now, the connection string and stuff is something that you have to make sure you understand. And we're going to discuss that a bit more in the hero call. But it's crazy fast because you can pop open like an Excel file or a tab delimited file or a comma delimited file. You can open multiples, do searches on them with SQL, connect them with SQL, run really crazy SQL commands, um, queries on them. Uh, it's very, very powerful. So it's a really cool one. Uh, translation with Claude. I'm not sure. Oh, that's right. Uh, we So... She is presenting, she'll be doing it, you know, I think she's up in Arizona, she's going to be presenting at the France, you know, worldwide convention. I think it's remote, though, for her. She's not traveling to France. And she'll be, um, you know, showing them how she's automated her tool, which she's doing also in the French language, but they're not quite ready yet, so she's only going to show, like, the English. And then she has this other part where she creates a report. And so... I said, hey, we could, um, we can easily convert our report and translate it into the other languages. And she's like, well, the, um, where the automations aren't ready yet for that. And I said, no, 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 you run all the automations in English. And then the results, we just do an English to French conversion on those things. So the terms don't change right in her tool. So we, we converted it to both French and to Spanish. And so now when they run a report in English, she can hit a button and it will convert it to French or Spanish you know, like instantly, and then they can print them out. So it's really cool. It's not the official way that they'll be going once they're fully done, but for this seminar, which is like in a week, um, she has something that she can share and show them what's coming, right? So that's very, very cool. We got that already done. We're using Claude. Claude for doing translation is really good. It's it, that's, that's a smart model. It's crazy. Um, we're doing a bunch of stuff with that. Um, let me also demo, let me open up, uh, automate my task. Actually, it's going to look a little funny, I think. Let me see here, because my DPI... Oh, no, it's okay. Um, so, we during... Which we did release a video on how to use computer use from Claude. And in that instance, we which we also had a, a call with a buddy of mine who works more with Docker and pushing things into cloud environments and using Docker. And he explained how we could make it easier to share that cl a Claude image... Um, because that was the really confusing part and there was a lot of setup. But he explained how if we cared to, we could go back and we could probably create our own cloud image that's closer, that's easier to share, to use. The thing is, when you're running the cloud image, the, the API calls can all be done on a Windows computer to cloud saying, hey, here's this image, automate doing this. But the implementation side of things and how Anthropic implemented it is all done in, I think, a Unix or Linux environment. So clearly, we're auto hockey users. We don't want to go that route. So we don't want to be doing that. So we're probably not, I don't think we'll go back and update our Docker video with a lot of stuff. It's quite complicated and it's just, even though it's a really, really cool topic because the automation of your computer is you tell the computer a goal and it achieves the goal for you. It figures it out and it self checks to stuff. It's really, really cool. Um, what I realized was, hey, with automate my tasks, cause let me, um, let's grab something. This is an old program and we need to update it to V2. Let me say if I'm going to look for the 16. Uh, let's see if we can find it. It found it. Um, I could hit test and it would actually click that for me. Um, now, what I was talking to Zayas about is, hey, instead of using 
the computer um, use tool from Claude. What if we use their vision, computer vision, and we send it um, a picture of all the recently, you know, window titles that have recently modified. So we take a screenshot of the window that has the recently modified files HK um, with this GUI. Oh, let's take that screenshot, send it to Claude, and then we send it this part or, or any, however many there are of these things, right? Because there might be multiple windows that have that. Then we send it this image that we're looking for and say, hey, Claude, you tell me where you find this, right? And then when it tells us the coordinates, we reinterpret that locally and we use auto hotkey on a Windows computer to click it, right? Um, all said and good, sounds, um, you know, do, definitely doable. We, we definitely think this is something pretty easy to do. And we tested it manually and we could do that. The really cool, cool thing about this that you may not be realizing is when we push the image into the cloud and an AI tool is doing the image match off of those things, it's more of a fuzzy match, right? So if I build this on my computer and this is 16 and the this looking this square, but if you have a different resolution on your computer, it still is probably going to do a more of a, a better job of finding that image, even if it's not exactly those pixels exactly laid out that way. Um, it'll still be restricting on which, you know, windows we're pushing in there. So... We think that's a really, really interesting idea, and we'll probably up update maybe even the older version of Automate My Task, or maybe the new one, um, but updating it to use Claude's vision for finding it, and that way, suddenly, image search across computers isn't so bad because it's an AI tool doing that. And the we also talked about we um, we tested after you send text to it, confirming the text actually got put into the edit window, and we confirmed we could do that, which is also really cool. Um, but of course, every time you do those things, it's taking more tokens, right? So we'll we'll do some testing to see if it's really something we want to do. But you get the idea, right? I think that'll be a really cool thing to be working on. Um, so more stuff with here, with them, with our reports. Lots of stuff on reporting for them. Um, Irfan put in a long week on their work. Um, solely just working for them, really. Uh, for Jeff, um, he's another client. I've talked to him. We're doing a prospect finder uh, in... And even like I said, we, we go into Crunchbase and we look at stuff in LinkedIn and we're connecting all in HubSpot for him. So it's quite complicated, um, really, really significant tool that we're, and every time he's having us do more and more complex things, um, it's a beast of a, a program. But yeah, that's a really good one we're working on. Did some more stuff for, this is another for Thomas, um, his tool. Yeah, text, so maybe Thomas is doing some updating there. Uh, I don't know what I was updating there. I'm not going to worry about that. It's nothing. Um, I didn't even name it, right? So it's probably, it's two kilobytes to be tiny. Transcribe media. So our AI tool for transcribing media was having some weird, we haven't shared it yet, right? But I've demoed it a couple times of you can transcribe and summarize is what that really should say. And Isaiah right now is working on a version where right now I drag a video or an audio file into it. I can filter on the speakers, assign speaker names, filter on the speakers. So I can search for text, find it where it is, and then we can easily extract audio or video from it. Crazy powerful tool and summarize the whole um, the whole video or just what you extract, whatever. It's very cool. But I said, hey, Zayas, we could easily tweak this thing to where instead of dragging in a local audio or video file, you give it a YouTube URL. And basically, instead of we transcribe it, we just get the YouTube transcriptions to it and and pull that into our tool and then we can filter on it we can do we can't extract the audio and video and that's not something that i'm really looking to do but for now that'll be a great thing to do because we can also you know search and find where something let's say you have a three-hour video you could search for terms see you could filter it up by speaker um and jump to those time points which would be really cool and that to me alone and summarize the video also so every video I upload to YouTube, I use our tool to summarize what's in there and it gives timestamps and stuff. Well, that can all be done with a YouTube video as well. Um, and it'll be very fast and easy to do. So we're gonna um, do that with ours. Um, this transcribe media, that's that's what I'm talking about there. Lots of updates. As Ace was fixing, there was one thing weird when you assigned the people's names, that he was fixing that. The, our effortless video reducer, let me go ahead and see if I can launch it. Um, I'll just show you. We added a new quality option. So how compressed, if you want high quality, it's not gonna be very compressed and minimal is gonna be crazy compressed. So it's not 
a good one to, to use unless you really just need the bare minimum. But I'll tell you, the file size is crazy tiny when you pick that minimum low. It's not ideal, but it's 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 okay. Like I can do stuff at low and it still looks decent. Uh, and again, the quality size is still very good. Um, the, sorry, the file size could shrunk a lot. Um, and this also helps you understand how fast the pro the faster you go, it's going to add more quality. Um, so that's kind of related to quality, but these, if you go slow, it'll get more details. Um, and your file size is usually bigger, but it also takes longer. But so we've we added these numbers to help you have a guide. Um, so this tool's been updated. And file fixer, I did a video on that. Um, we actually had a problem, which we're going to release a video on it. And it's really kind of, it's going to be hard to explain because the, the problem was so complicated. But from the APIs, like both Claude and ChatGPT, when we were doing translation stuff, sometimes the text we got back, I don't want to say it wasn't properly encoded, but it had something to do with the way they were encoding it and the comma object didn't correctly recognize the encoding. So Isaiah has built a, a function now it's in our libraries, but we're gonna we're gonna release it as a separate function to just say sometimes if you're getting text back from your when you're getting text back from a given API call where and we don't it's not every API that does this, but some of them do it in a certain way. This our our class or our function will um, properly store it for you, <laughs> so it fixes some of those things. Get active path, um, Isaiah. I just asked him to fix not fix it but change it. Um, so. If there's an open or save dialog box um, that's open, but I hit, I'm in like Explorer and I hit Control Shift or, or um, Control Shift C, which is the hot key that I use to get the active path of a file. If there's an open or save dialog box open, it'll automatically paste what just got copied, you know, to the clipboard. Um, it'll be, it'll paste it into that open or save dialog because that's really what you're doing, right? So it'll save me that step. So that was a nice little add. Um, convert to array to this has to do with that library that we're creating and let's see here or we updated a little bit on our excel we had a really good call where scott uh, here remember did some work for me actually um going through using com and excel to rip out the first column if if it had a certain header and so he uh he when we were doing that we realized we were missing a couple things in the our excel function library that we had in v1 but not v2 so we added those and updated the download that Excel function library, it's got a lot of great stuff in there, so you might want to check that out. Uh, Message Master. So one of our clients was talking about automating texting people. Now, Message Master is our newsletter tool, but it at one point had texting. We were going to put it into there. But I was mentioning to our client that we could use PushBullet, and we have a script that uses an API for PushBullet for sending text or text, no, Mighty, no, yeah, TextMaster. No. Uh, but there's another tool that you can use for automating texts, and they're both good. The, the push bolt's a great cheap one if you have an Android phone. Um, other text magic, I think, is the other one I'm thinking of. It's a, it's like you know four or eight cents per text, and that adds up when you're doing thousands of things. So let's see here. Um, we also so in Mailgun, I have I'm reading. Where's my oh oh I left it in the other room. But this is how much I like the book. I'm reading the book. But I also bought the audio CDs. So let me see if we can this this no BS. Dan Kennedy, uh, but it's really Parith, and I'm gonna plan a call with him. Um, Shaw, I think his name is. He has it, yeah. Parthiv Shaw, um, really good book. He's been around for quite a while in marketing automation stuff, and I've read his other book like Kama Business Kama Sutra. Really interesting idea. Really smart because uh, let me give you the gist of the book is when you first start dating somebody. You know, you don't you don't ask them, you know, usually to uh, go all the way on the first date, right? You start off with just getting to know them, and then and then it goes to like maybe going out to dinner, and then maybe you know the next steps, right? Well, in business, it should be the same way. You start off slow, and you don't ask for the sale right away, right? You you ease into it. Um, but in this book, he talks a lot about how to use mostly marketing automation, but honestly, it his. Discussion has helped me understand, uh, conceive of things with AutoHotKey as well of doing desktop automation, which is much more what we're doing, or RPA, robotic process automation, is what we do with AutoHotKey, right? Um, and how marketing automation is different. Um, and some of the things, because marketing automation has to do with things that humans, you could never employ enough people, like, you know, it would cost way too much to try to say, I'm gonna look at all the emails I send out, 
and I'm gonna watch every link people click, and those that click a certain link, I'm gonna follow up, I'm gonna write them individually, right? Like that's just not something that it makes sense to ever have humans, no matter how cheap, do that. Well, with AutoHotKey, we are often bringing automations in to replace things that people actually are doing, right? And that's one of the big differences to me between the marketing automations and auto hotkey and desktop automation is humans have been solving the things that we are, you know, helping with for forever, right? And often they keep doing it. And it's part of the problem because they don't even realize they have a problem because they're already quote unquote solving it. They're doing it a certain way and they don't rethink the problem. So it was a big aha for me of like how we need to work better at ex elevating people to understand they have a problem in the first place, right? The fact that you're watching this video, you know, it's painful, right? The, the stuff you're doing is painful. So you're trying to learn ways to, to be more productive, probably, right? Um, or, um, but you get the idea, right? So it was really interesting. Uh, it's a very, very good book. I highly recommend it. And, uh, but that's with, with Mailgun, we send out our newsletter um, through Mailgun, which is an API tool for sending emails. And I can see people's opens and clicks and not only the clicks, but I can tell what they click on. So we're gonna watch for clicking of, like let's say you click the intro to auto hotkey thumbnail to see, learn more about the course. Well, we can add you to a drip campaign talking about how that course is or what you'd learn in it, or here's some of the intro to auto hockey topics or, and I shared like a half dozen of them or so videos on YouTube. I could link to each one of those individually. The point is it's relevant, it's timely because you just clicked it, right? And over time, maybe you'll buy the course, right? And it's it's always about the relevance in the timeliness. If you can tie those two things together in what you're doing and you're, it really, really helps your actual ability to quote unquote sell something or it's really about providing value, right? When you do those things, you're providing a lot more value to people and then they trust you. And then also they see like, wow, I really see how the rest of this course, I really need that course, right? So um, that's one of the things we've been working on there. Uh, we noticed in our, which actually we made some major updates to our automator spy. Let me, let me go ahead and fire that one up. I think I have a hotkey for it. There we go. Yeah. So, um, and now let me, we're going to add a hotkey selection tool right now. We don't have it. Um, the first thing I want to point out is see now there's current DPI and there's, we can't easily change the color. So we just put in the arrow here. If it's not at a hundred, let me go on my other screen here and hit my hotkey. See, it's 100, but on here, it's at 125. And so I would love to have bolded this or made it red, but because this is a status bar, that's not something that's easy to do. And I said, let's just, you know what, let's just get something here to help it pop, right? So that we did that. The other thing we did, which is really, really cool, is here's the text on the screen, and I can search, and I can start search for DPI change, and it's filtering this list. Right, and I have a search here, here, and looks like we've got a little more work to do because this is a little weird. Let's see if I drag that out a little better. Um, but the the search is applicable to each thing beneath it, and we used a queue to um, when you to tell you what it is. So the queue is another great little tip that uh, it allows you to pre-fill that, but when people start typing, that disappears. So uh, we avoided having like the status bar text. We didn't have to have that because the way we laid out this GUI, it was going to be problematic to add that. And so we just put it as a queue. But I think it's very cool of like now when you have a lot of text, right, we can just search for a term and not have to try to find it with our eyes, right, or copy it and go to Notepad or somewhere and paste it and then search. So why not have the filters in here, right? So um, that's another one we added. And then the, the third one, there's actually there's several more, and we'll make a video on this tool pretty soon. Um, I'll have to show Isaiah this little... It's a little weird there, but um, overall, it's it's a very cool tool. Uh, I'll put the URL up there uh, for that. Um, so we got we got that one working pretty well. Isaiah, he had updated his computer, and the Windows update that he did it actually broke Prompt Assistant, and he he went like about five days because we were so busy where he didn't have Prompt Assistant, and it was killing him. I could tell because he's so hooked on it. It's such a great tool for speeding up what you do. But he finally had some time where he we didn't have client calls and he dug into it and I heard him saying it. I, I we weren't he wasn't I wasn't watching a screen at the time. But it sounds like before Windows was incorrectly working with GDI and of course that's how we build our program. But they fixed it, quote unquote, fixed it, which actually caused a problem because we were relying on something that wasn't the way it was supposed to be. So 
Now he's built into a tool, whether you have the, the old way or the new way, it works. And so Proposition's is back to working for him. So I'm glad we figured that one out. Here's our automator spy that I just mentioned. Set the Q banner, uh, that's the class that does that. And um, time tracker, let me show you, well, I'll hold off on that. Actually, I can launch it. You want to delete previous log? Yes. Now I'm going to activate this window. I'm going to come over here and activate OBS. And then I'll activate Telegram. Um, I'll come back to recently modified files. And then let me go and exit um, out of the tool. Oh, switch monitor. Sorry, I thought that was something else. So I'm going to exit now here. It basically says there was 16 seconds that I was in my recently modified files script, four seconds where I was on OBS, and three where I was in, actually, that's interesting, says Isaiah. It's getting the window title, but maybe we should have the, we can programmatically get the program, right? Because that would be confusing. Um, so maybe we'll have to update that. But this tool, we're gonna borrow this tool. It's a way to track what, where you're spending your time. But imagine running this tool and recording your screen and then recording a screen and your audio and talking through, hey, how do you go through this process? You're talking through how you manually achieve a goal doing a process where recording the screen or at least the active window where your cursor is and where your mouse is. And we have this file um, with this will actually have timestamps in it as well or something like that. And the audio and you should be talking, right? And all of that, when you hit exit and you're done, it actually helps you understand how to automate that process. We could shove that into an AI tool and say, hey, how could we automate this? So it's going to be a cool little um, overall way to track what you're doing and better find ways to better automate that process. Or at the bare minimum, where clients can run it and then send it to us and we can look at it without having to be there shadowing them every second of every day. So uh, that's basically what we've been up to the last uh, week. There's anything else here? Prompt assistant, honor spy, set queue, test DDP. That still had to do the same thing. And they get, it uh, looks like Isaiah is just working with the get transcripts right now. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any interest in having us help automate what you do, I guarantee you we can do it, you know, so much faster and more reliably, unless you're a professional auto hotkey coder, right? Uh, I don't even pretend to be. Um, the guys I have hire. I hire they they are and this is what we do um, the other one is our hero program we have three hours of calls each week and they're private calls where we just have help people with what they're working on and then we usually have a topic that will you know several topics we'll talk to, to to lecture in case someone doesn't have something to work on then we'll teach given topics uh, and of course our courses are also available and those are great ways to learn auto hotkey but uh thanks for watching have a great day and i hope to see you soon cheers